and the people's key and we are back in the building well 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 that was a madness <laughs> that was a madness obviously we're here for another match reaction please make sure you guys smash a like please make sure you share please make sure you do obviously subscribe to the channel guys 2-1 against spurs um i don't listen I don't think people will really care if you lose a game, you deserve to lose, you know, on the football pitch, if they were just a better team than you and stuff like that. You know, even me, Mr. Pessimistic, Mr. Negative, Mr. Megatron, as they like to call me these days, even I'm sitting there saying that was the best performance I've seen from Liverpool this season. But we'll obviously we'll dive into the match reaction. We'll take a look at, you know, some of the biggest talking points of the game. And we'll also take a look at yeah, the PGML, PGMOL statement um, that was put out after the game in regards to, you know, the incidents. And we're, to be honest, which incident am I even talking about? But you know what? We'll get into all of that. We'll dive into that. So, guys, please make sure you stay tuned. Let me know, obviously, what you guys think in the comment section. Let's get into it. here um, make sure you guys as i mentioned before make sure you're obviously smashing that like make sure you're sharing and make sure you do subscribe if you guys do hear some noises in the back it probably is just my son who is sleeping it is very late here but i said i needed to record this man i did I wanted to put this out and you know to see what people see what the people are saying to be honest with you see what the people are saying um but yeah i think um look this is it was the the game of the weekend and and i don't mean because of the football, to be honest with you, I think it was purely down to everything that was going on, you know, in the game, in terms of the refereeing decisions, in terms of VAR. Um, listen, as I mentioned before in the intro, you know it's a crazy game when you've got me, of all people, you know, turning around to say, you know, how impressed I was with Liverpool's game. And, you know, Liverpool could easily have felt quite hard done by, you know, by the end of that match, you know. Big up Tottenham, because obviously... Look, at the end of the day, they're not going to care. Why would you care? Do you, you get what I'm trying to say? We can all sit here and do the whole VAR thing and blah, blah. It, it, honestly, it doesn't even matter because the, the decisions have been made now. Do you get what I mean? Yes, we can moan. We can send letters. We can, you know, have such and such, you know, maybe not uh, referee games. and We can do all of that stuff. And that's cool. Guess what? That don't help this game, though. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So all of the moaning, the, and I, I get it. I, listen, even I was sitting there saying, Brad, this is actually kind of crazy, you know, some decisions and stuff like that. But ultimately, it doesn't even matter. Did you get I me? Mean, there's nothing you can do about it. All you've got to do now is just, you know, kind of just move on. If I'm being totally honest with you. And, you know, it, listen, every, everything is context. Everything is in relation to, you know, the games in itself. But what I will say is Liverpool have rode their luck this season, you know, in, in terms, in my opinion, you know, in terms of the way we played. Um, you know, been going down in games and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes I felt like, you know, we've been lucky to even walk away with some of these victories, you know, and, you know, it looks like everything just came to a head, in my personal opinion, you know, when I look at that. Yes, there was, like I said, if you want to call it injustice, you want to call it this, you know, it, it honestly doesn't even matter. It, like, you know what I mean? We're just, right now, we're just crying wolf because it's nothing that we can realistically do you know, about the situation, as annoying as it is. But obviously, we'll dive into the game, dive into, you know, a few things, you know, we'll take a look at, you know, some of the contentious decisions that were obviously made, you know, within the game and, and stuff like that. I think, and then obviously, I want to take a look, you know, there's um, there's two players I want to take a look at um, from both sides, uh, well, from both sides in, uh, for Liverpool in terms of good and bad. Um, 
you know, player who I thought was man of the match and player who I thought, you know, despite everything else that was kind of happening around, you know, I, I still felt they were quite poor, you know, within the game. But obviously, we'll, we'll get on to we'll get we'll get on to the first thing I wanted um, to take a look at. Um, where should we start? I mean, there were so many contentious things. I don't even know, but we'll start here. We'll start. Here. So obviously, it's the offside, uh, the Luis Diaz offside. Now, when I first saw this, I thought he was offside. I genuinely thought, yep, he's offside. Blah blah blah. They didn't draw any lines on Sky um, whilst you're watching the game, so we didn't have any other kind of indication to say, okay, yeah, this is potentially on, blah, blah, blah. But obviously, when you look at this freeze frame here, then you're like, hmm, he kind of looks a little piece on side. And it's then very weird, you know, in regards to why they've been you know, drawn the lines and, you know, done anything basically to indicate, yeah, we've at least tried to look at this. Uh, we have looked at it, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, you know, all, you know, all of those, all of those kind of things. Then obviously this is on uh, Richard Keys, and um, formerly off Sky, but funnily enough, um, on his broadcast channel, um, uh, they've obviously drawn the lines here. So then obviously you can see here by the lines in itself, he is easily on side. And um, from what I've heard, it's about like sixty odd centimeters. Um, I believe that he was actually on side. So obviously Liverpool can easily feel quite hard done, you know, quite hard done there. And to be honest, um, you know, we started the game, we started the game pretty well. If I'm being super real with you, I felt like we started the game um, quite brightly. Um, obviously, Tottenham were having, you know, a bit of possession. They were popping the ball about as well. They are at home. They are the home team. I do kind of expect them to have their spell and stuff like that because they are still a good team. No, no matter what happens, I don't want to take away from Tottenham or Liverpool's, you know, performance in a general sense. But, yeah, um, in regards to this, this... You know, goals change trajectory of games. Um, you know, I don't want to say it changes a whole game, if I'm being totally honest with you, because you've still got time in games to, to do things. It's different if, if a contentious decision happens at the end of a game, then yeah, I can understand. Of course, that changed the game. But I wouldn't say it changes a whole game when it happens so early on in the game, because you've still got enough time to go out there and you know, do whatever it is that you need to do. So, you know, of course, it is what it is, but ultimately, like I said, I genuinely thought at first this was offside. But then again, seeing this, you know that the, the you know the referee VAR, you know they've completely you know botched this up, and you know you you know they botched it up when this is the statement that they are putting out, you know, at the end of the game. So this is a PG MOL statement. It reads, you guys, you've already probably read it anyway, but I'll read it out um, for those who haven't. Uh, PG MOL acknowledge a significant human error occurred during the first half of Tottenham Hotspur versus Liverpool. The goal by Luis Diaz was disallowed for offside by the on-field team of match officials. This was a clear and obvious factual error and should have resulted in the goal being awarded through VAR intervention. However, the VAR failed to intervene. PGMOL will conduct a full review into the circumstances which led to the error. PGMOL will immediately be contacting Liverpool at the conclusion of the fixture to acknowledge the error. Now, this is, you see, you see all of those kind of things. This is why I always say, bro, there's not really any point. It's kind of a pointless look. It, people, it's like people want you to say sorry to something that you've already done kind of thing. And I guess obviously you're acknowledging the error. So there's there's one side of it. That's, that's obviously the, the, the flip side, shall we say. And I get it. That's It's one of those things that you kind of just have to do, blah, blah, blah. And that's absolutely fine. I've not really got no issue with that. But for Liverpool fans, it's not going to matter. Do you get what I'm trying to say? That even reading that doesn't even, it doesn't make me feel any better. You know, there's not much you can really do. There's not much clock can even really realistically say um, kind of thing. Um, so when I see those kind of things, I get, listen, I get the outrage. But for me, like I said, once the game's done and all the decisions have been made and whatever and this, that and the third, it, it's already done. I just move on now. Like, do you get what I mean? It's just, it would have been different maybe if we'd also played crap as well. Because then you're just like, yeah, we played shit. Then you're, then you're looking for excuses. But in these kind of situations, I always just say, just move. We move. We keep it moving. It was a good enough performance from us. Do you know what I mean? It's not like we're sitting here in a position like, oh my goodness, like, you know, um, Yes, it was injustice, you know, and stuff like that. But at the same time, we played shit. So we're using that as a base of our excuses. We played well, man. Do you get what I mean? So I, like, I, it's not bothering me. I, I, like I said, I, I don't want people to think I'm trying to police anybody or anything like that. 
I totally get the outrage. I fully, fully get it. But um, uh, it, to me, it's just not that deep, man. I'm just like, they got it wrong. It's human error. I'm not even mad. I'm actually not even, you, you get I mean, I'm not even, you know, mad um, at that kind of thing because these kind of things could eas- like easily happen. They've been happening throughout the, since I've been watching football from when I was a boy. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, if it's still happening now, even though it shouldn't be, even though VAR should have done its job, even though that's why VAR is there, ultimately it happened. We move. It is what it is. Even even when we had that disallowed goal, it's not like it really deterred Liverpool. If I'm being totally honest, I still felt like we were, you know, um, still playing well. You know, um, still trying to. It, it, we 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 came there, and it almost reminded me of the performance that we put in against Manchester City last season. Even though I know we had a shit season last year you know, at home to Manchester City, where we won 1-0 thanks to Mo Salah's goal. Um, it was that kind of performance where we, we, it's almost like, I, I don't want to say a different type of game plan. Obviously, we had to respect Tottenham. Do you, you get what I mean? Like, and I think Klopp understood that, which is what I was more intrigued about, was is he going to respect Tottenham, but also at the same time still try to show off whatever it is you know, that we can do now? Where we... The way we've been playing these last few games in terms of going forward, no, nah, I don't really think so. I wouldn't really say that if I'm being totally honest with you. But this was a more mature performance. I think that's why I liked it so much. And the gung ho stuff is cool, and you know, if it could work, it could work kind of thing. But ultimately, it's these kind of performances that I look to, and these are the kind of performances that I even look at. And like I said, you guys already know me. You already know my feelings on on Klopp and, you know, certain players and stuff like that. But even I had to look at that performance and was like, yo, you lot are, are showing me something. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You're, you're actually showing me, you know, showing me something. Ultimately, though, it was for nothing because we lost. But in terms of the performance itself, yo, I can, I can definitely, you know, I can definitely mess with it. So, yeah, man, I, I'm not, I'm not, um, again, I, it's, it's crazy. I'm not even that angry. You, you, you would be, obviously, because we lost the game and it's annoying to lose a game. Um, against Tottenham. Tottenham are a very, very good team. They showed that in parts, you know, in the game and stuff like that. So I can see why, you know, um, a lot of the Spurs fans are quite happy and excited at what they're kind of seeing with Ange and stuff like that. I totally get it now, you know, um, seeing it really firsthand and stuff like that. Obviously watching them this season, but up against our team to see how they dealt with, you know, our team, you know, kudos to them. And did you get what I'm trying to say? Obviously, they beat us, you know, we had nine men and it took an own goal. But again, it, like I said, those kind of things, if you're on the other end, you're not saying that. Do you get what I mean? If you're on the other end, you're saying, I don't care that you have eight men. We beat you and we move on. Do you get what I'm trying to say? We've just got to just dust ourselves off and just obviously move, you know, move forward. Obviously, we've lost our unbeaten run as well. So, you know, it, like I said, it is just one of those kind of things. But yeah, when it comes to the offside um, and when it comes to, you know, how we were playing during that period of time, of course, now look at it again, you know, here with the lines and stuff like that, like I said, for me, should have been given as, um, as onside um, and we should have obviously had that goal. It was a very good finish from Luis Diaz, again, Mo Salah, um, playing in that kind of facilitator role, you know. Um, yeah, man, it, 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 was all, it was all good for me, you know, up until, you know, up until that point. And then, obviously, Tottenham go ahead and score. Again, that had nothing to do with VAR. Like, that was, that was the period of the game where Tottenham, in my opinion, were having a bit of a foothold and stuff like that, you know, in the game. And that's where I was a bit like, mm, this is what I'm saying with Liverpool. That of course, I'm not saying not, not every team, you know, we just saw, you know, Manchester City lose the Wolves, you know, um, during the weekend. So, of course, anyone can lose, anyone can concede goals. It is what it is, blah, blah, blah. But you see that goal that we conceded? Yeah. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, that goal was so basic. Like, in terms of, it wasn't some crazy intricate play. It wasn't like they were popping it about and, you know, they you know, they've completely done a mazzoline and you're just like, oh my goodness, like, yo, Liverpool, yeah, not Liverpool, sorry, Spurs, Jesus Christ, this is what you're talking about? All right, cool. No, it was a very basic goal. Madison picks up the ball from deep, um, fullback, uh, Joe Gomez, not really tracking the runners um, on that side of the pitch. Guess what? Um, Richardson's making that run. He runs in, easy pass into Son. Defenders, again, not really switched on in the middle of the park. Boom. Son comes in and scores. And it's like I said before the game as well, speaking on match previews and things like that, when it comes to players like Son, I promise you, you don't want to give that brother a sniff. He had a goal disallowed in the game as well, obviously right before offside, um, which is quite ironic. But um, you don't want to give these kind of guys like a sniff, man. It's all long. It's all long. Man. We ain't playing against Cunha. We're not playing against Mikel Antonio. 
you know what I'm trying to say, Callum Wilson and them type of brothers, you know, this is against one of the best players, you know, in the Premier League itself, man. So when you give that guy a sniff, he, he's he's more often than not going to take it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And I think that's what disappointed me more with that goal was obviously you can't, if you can't stop it, you can't stop it kind of thing and in a general sense. But I just felt there was no real pressure on Madison when he got the ball. He was able to pick up the ball, put his head up and then obviously just play that simple pass, you know, into... Um, into Richarlison's run. It was a good ball. I'm, I'm not trying to take away from the pass in itself. But again, that period of play, like I said, that was when I felt Tottenham were starting to take a bit of a foothold, you know, in the game and stuff like that. And that was the, the more annoying thing, you know, so to speak, you know, behind everything. And that's why I felt a little bit like, mm, yeah, you know, if we're not careful here, Tottenham could, I mean, they had a, a ball that was flashed across the box. I think this was before the uh, play school, actually. A ball flashed across the box from Richarlison. You know, if Kudelski was just a bit more, mm, a bit more wiser on the back end, on the back stick, he slots that in. You know, absolutely no problem. They were causing us issues at times in the game. Let me not even lie. But again, this is this is why this is. It, it's funny because obviously everyone spoke, everyone's heard me speak about Liverpool the way they played and stuff like that, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're too harsh, you're too harsh." Da, 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 and whatever. I guess each their own. I ain't here to beef anybody on that. I don't really care. To be fair, but. I'm not here to beef anybody on the, on that. But you see, when I'm talking about performances, and I say to, I think I said this, um, I think I might have even said this on Enza's show and, and somewhere else. When Liverpool, the day I come and tell you that Liverpool had a good performance, you'll just see it. This is what I'm talking about. Like, that is what I'm talking about when I say a good performance, and I can't even sit here and criticise in terms of in totality. Of course, there's parts in the game that were not good. It was obviously players in the game I felt that were n- not really, you know, up to par and stuff like that. And cool, n- not a problem. It, 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 that those can happen even within good performances. But in totality, I am very happy with the actual performance. And I'm assuming I don't know. I don't want to put words in people's mouths, and I don't want to just go by via you know social media. But from everything I'm seeing, everyone kind of is in unison that our oh, Liverpool really did play, you know, extremely well, even when it went down to nine men. You know, we did actually play quite well in the game. We defended well and blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm talking about. It's not just the defending side because it's the whole game and everything like that. But that's what I'm talking about when I mention when Liverpool play well, you'll just agree that we played well and you'll understand where where it is I'm actually coming from. And that kind of performance is the, are the kind of performances I've always known is there, if that makes sense. I've always known that that kind of game is there. You know, but we just weren't really unlocking it. So all the great stuff, yeah, winning 3-1 here, 3-1 there, and you guys saying, oh, I'm nitpicking and blah, blah, blah. Forget all of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Forget all of that. It, it, like, that is the kind of performance. That's what I, in my opinion, anyway, that's what I call a mature, you know, solid kind of performance. But again, obviously, we know with VAR, with the ref, and, you know, just certain things just not really patterning, you know, within the game, then, you know, it is what it is. We ended up even, you know, just losing the game. Fair enough. We take the L, not a problem. Well done to Tottenham. It is what it is. But I'm just talking purely about the performance in itself. Yeah, like I said, man, I was very, very happy, you know, um, with it. But again, going back to obviously Son's goal, like I said, man, it, it was that period of play where I was just thinking, yeah, they're just, they are getting that foothold, you know, within the game. And if we're not careful, we could easily just be outside, you know, and not because they're even playing sick for the whole game. It's just when you've got Son, one of the best players in the Premier League, you know, when you've got him in your team, yeah, it's a bit problematic. And obviously he can help facilitate the players like Richarlison, who obviously got the assist, Madison, you know, who's going to be playing in those pockets of spaces. Madison was pretty decent, you know, within the game um, in itself before they kind of just tired out um, and just didn't really have any idea what to do, you know, after that. But yeah, um, th- th- that was to that. And that was probably my only real kind of issue I had, you know, with the game I mean like I said I mean going forward I felt like we were we were the, the Mo Salah was obviously the outlet within the game and he was you know relatively frightening in terms of when I say frightening just in terms of I felt like his battle with Udoji like you Udoji did have the upper maybe probably did even have the upper hand in terms of like the 50-50s and stuff like that but he could never sleep he just really really couldn't sleep this game like he knew yeah, I can't even let this brother just go. I actually can't even just not know where he is. And the most Salah, you know, trying to... Some of the passing that this brother was doing was 
Like, you know, obviously we know the pass for Luis Diaz, but he should be putting that in the back of the net. Should have, would have, could have, obviously didn't do it, but he should have scored, you know, that, you know, it's crazy because Mo, again, you know, it's these type of things, man, like I've been saying about Mo Salah, man, he's had this in his locker for time, but obviously now he's just unlocking it. He's just opened, opened the door fully on, on this kind of game, but he's always been able to do this. I've been watching Mo Salah, you know, provide sick assists, you know, outside of the boot things and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. He's been able to do that. So, you know, yeah, as I mentioned before, yeah, it's quite, it's quite annoying, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, obviously, I'll go to the next, um, the next point um, in the game, um, and that is this right here. So, obviously, it's the Curtis Jones red card. Now, listen, obviously got sent off for this. You guys can see it here in terms of the steal. Obviously, when we're looking at the steal here, it looks brave. I can't even lie to you. It actually looks super brave. Um, and my thing is, what I will say is, I if if you want me to answer, do I think it's a red card or not? I'll say yes because I'll say, let, I always put myself in reverse, um, in in the opposition shoes and stuff like that. And I will say this: if that happened to us, we'd all be jumping up, screaming, saying that's a red card. Blah blah blah. blah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because it it was, it ended up being a very dangerous tackle. Whether he meant it or not, it's probably the most irrelevant thing in the world. Because <laughs> when people say, oh, but he never went in with intent. Well, I don't think anyone really goes in with intent at any given time to actually hurt someone. You go in, sometimes you might want to go into a challenge just to leave something on someone, but you don't go in there like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to break his leg and end his career. No, it doesn't It doesn't work like that. In my opinion, anyway, I don't think it works like that. And I'm sure most footballers will come out and say the exact same thing. But ultimately it can happen within games even by accident kind of thing and this was one of those ones where it's almost like he gave the yellow card at first because obviously he probably just thought it wasn't as bad and then obviously when he's looked at the still and obviously the still is going to be showing it you know at its worst point obviously there's a whole action that actually happens before it but like i said i understand i can see it from both sides i could genuinely see it from both sides like, you know, people saying about Jones not really meaning it. I get that side of it because I don't think what not what well, I don't know Jones. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? But to me, he didn't look like he was trying to hurt him. But ultimately, what he's tried to do is clearly obviously drag the ball to take it off of Basuma. Basuma's just a little bit quicker than him. And then obviously he's rolled over it. And then he's resulted in that kind of challenge. So, you know, for me, I'm just like, I get it. Do you, you get what I mean? Like I generally, generally get it. So, you know, yeah, I, I'm not mad at that red card if I'm being totally honest with you I felt like it was deserved um I don't think Liverpool are going to try and appeal that to be honest I mean I'll be surprised if they did maybe they might I, I don't really know but um I don't feel like it's something that they'd win if I'm being totally honest with you I, I do feel like that you might it might be a losing battle with that one like I said put yourself in Tottenham shoes you'd all be jumping up and screaming saying oh my goodness that has to be a red card blah 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 look he's gone in studs in blah 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 Look, look how he's caught him. If you, if you take a look at the, the picture again, look how he's caught him. You know, that could have been a leg breaker. Then what? Now we're sitting and saying, oh, but it was an accident. I don't know, man. I don't know. So, yeah, for me, red card. Definitely a red card. Um, unfortunate for Jones. Um, I know, to me, he didn't mean it, of course, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, for me, it, I felt like it was a red card, to be honest with you. Um, then moving on to the... On to the last um, point um, in terms of contentious decisions. Jesus Christ, I spent the last 20 minutes just talking about contentious, you know, decisions other than the game, but that's the kind of game, you know, that it was. Um, and then obviously that is this guy uh, right here, and that is Diogo Jota. Now, obviously Jota got sent off for two yellow cards, right? The first yellow card that he did receive um, was for a foul on Adoji. Um, he didn't foul Adoji. Um, I think Adodi actually tripped off, tripped over his own um, his own leg. So I was like, "Rah, how's he getting?" Obviously, at first I thought he did trip him up, but when you look at the replay and things like that, you can see that um, Adodi's obviously tripped up over his own leg. So he shouldn't have got a yellow card for that. The problem that Jota had, <laughs> though, was first of all any slight touch or anything like that, Adodi was always going to go down. Secondly, what the dumb thing from Jota was. He was when he came. Jota was shit, by the way. He was actually, and but he's not even one of the players I'm actually going to talk about. But he was genuinely shit. Um, he came on the pitch absolutely useless. Like absolutely, he, he for me is like what like in this game anyway was one of the reasons why we were, you know, which helped contribute contributed towards us losing. First, obviously getting himself sent off, but just doing dumb fouls. I'm just like, 
why are you fouling every two seconds? Like, did Klopp tell you, yeah, I beg you just come on, be a bit of a nuisance, do it, bro? I'm, I'm, I don't feel like he would have come on and said all of that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, so, you know, you doing that, you, you put yourself under the, the spotlight to the referee straight away by doing these silly fouls as soon as you're coming on. Bro, Jota was shit, man. Jota was shit. Like, honestly, bro. Like, I was just, uh, it was so mad. I was just happy to even see the back of him when he did get set up. I was like, bro, you, this seems like one of those subs here where you're like, I need to sub this up. Because you, you're actually just performing so rubbish right now. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Um, but the second yellow that he did get, obviously that's a yellow card, of course. And again, it's very stupid from Diogo Jota. You're already on a yellow card. If the referee's giving you a yellow card for that, he's definitely he has to be consistent in that in that regard. He's going to have to give you a yellow card for that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So yeah, like I said, that one should he have been sent off if we're just looking at that the. The situation in isolation, no, because the first yellow card was not a yellow card at all for that challenge. But he he should have actually been booked prior to that anyway. So he even got lucky with that. So the sheer fact that he ended up getting booked for that, it's like, it, it's almost like justice was served in, in a sense. Um, But if we're just looking at it fairly and stuff like that, then no, nah, he shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have been sent off if I'm being, you know, totally honest with you. But yeah, for, for me, yeah, Jota was, yeah, he was, he was annoying. <laughs> he was so, so annoying. But, but yeah, those are the, those are the contentious, um, you know, decisions. Let me know, obviously, in the comment section. What did you guys think? Even if you guys send in a paragraph, an essay, let me know what you guys think. And I, I really want to know everyone's feelings um, in regards to, you know, those decisions within the game um, and, you know, stuff like that and how you felt like it would have contributed or not contributed, you know, towards, you know, towards the game in itself. Now let's actually get to the match and, you know, quickly just talk about uh, two players that I wanted to take a look at. Um, the good, the bad, the good, the bad, the good, the bad, the good, the bad. Let's start with the bad. Let's start with the bad. Um, one player, I don't care what anybody says. I'm tired of people making excuses. You already know it's McAllister. Uh, I thought he was dry as chips just out the up. Like, I don't even understand half the time what this brother's even doing. Like, I don't, I, like, I'm just baffled. Like, I don't want to slander him. I don't want to slate, man. Do you get what I'm trying to say? He's still a new signing. You know, he's still trying to do his thing and blah, blah, blah. And I get all of that. But for me, I'm watching this guy on the pitch. And shout out Roms, because uh, uh, Roms went to the game with Mops. And obviously, Rums is just telling us, like, yo, McAllister is, he, he, he's blowing hard, you know, pause, you know, um, in terms of, you know, um, his performance on the pitch, not being able to get around, you know, we ain't got enough legs in there and stuff like that. Well, the legs in there when you've got nine men is obviously going to be difficult. Well, sorry, if you've got 11 men, it's difficult enough. When you've then got 10 men and then nine men, McAllister in there, he, that brother's a hindrance, man. I thought he was. I did, I, he wasn't obviously nowhere near as bad as Jota, but he was, for me, in terms of the players who started the game, oh, I thought he was poor, man. I thought it was poor. There's no stats that you can bring up. There's no, there's nothing. <laughs> there's really nothing. I thought he was poor, man. Like, he just, for me, just seems like a brother who just can't keep up. We're all, people worrying about Endo being able to keep up. This brother can't keep up at all. Can't keep up at all. Yeah, I, I think there was a couple of times I saw him recover the ball and stuff like that. And I was just like, yo, that, yeah, that's good. But, yeah, man. It, like, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not really giving ratings and stuff like that in, in terms of for the game. Like, I'm not giving anyone a good uh, like ratings out of ten and stuff like that. I'll probably jump on uh, one of the streams and um, maybe I'll rate it. But last week, I think what did I give him like a six? Yeah, this week I'm giving you like a like a five, man. Like you're you're definitely getting like a five. If I, if I had to if I had to give him a number, I just thought this brother's like just. And that's me being super kind because of the overall performance from Liverpool. But yeah, you you stuck out like a sore thumb. Do you get what I'm trying to? You and Luis Diaz then really just stuck out like a, a sore thumb. I didn't think Diaz was all that good, to be honest, in the game as well. Obviously, outside of the disallowed goal, I didn't really feel like he was able to really affect the game as much kind of thing. Obviously, then missing that chance as well, you know, from the most out of pass. It kind of just, you know, everything in totality, you know, I didn't really feel like he was, he was really that good. But yeah, for me, the worst player, for Liverpool, um, outside of Diogo Jota coming off the bench, um, was um, yeah, McAllister for me. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm tired of the excuse, I'm tired of people saying, Oh, yeah, but he was. Uh, nah, I'm not trying to hear none of that, definitely not trying to hear none of that, man. I felt like let's stop the excuses, man, and hold, hold a man accountable. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Man, ain't trying to, I'm not carrying no passengers. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, 
Gavin Birch, let's put it Gavin Birch has played better for Liverpool and he's played less games. And he just came and he's he's not even starting games. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? And that's that that tells me everything I need to know. Um both more or less cost the same amount as well. If not, they did. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think next game he does need to be dropped um against Brighton. And I think we need to be putting in Gavin Birch instead of, you know, maybe just trying something different because for me, McAllister, you're drowning in that midfield role. You're so you're just drowning, my guy. And I know you're a sick player as well. That's the maddest thing about it. We all know he's a sick player. But yeah, he, he's not popping right now. And I'm tired of seeing this brother in the lineup all the time. And you deserve you don't deserve to start games. So you like you deserve the, the Mickey Mouse games, the cup games, the lasks and that. Yeah, I mean you could play those games and maybe work your way back up and acclimatize yourself. And that's fine. I've got no beef with that. It can happen. Not everyone can bang on the first year that they join a the football club or the first time that they join a the football club. Not an issue, but I've been so unimpressed with this brother since he joined. And that's not what I thought I was going to see with someone like a McAllister. But it is what it is, man. And we move. I'm not going to dwell on that too, you know, too too much. Um, another player I felt was, I think, the, like I said, the whole team was 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 solid. The whole team generally was solid. It's like I said, you know, McAllister, Diaz, don't really feel their, their kind of performance. If I'm being totally honest with you, the Bozzolai was calm. So Jones got sent off, so really he, he was okay before that. Um, but yeah, and... McAllister was calm. No, not McAllister. It's a Bozzola, should I say? Sorry. He was calm in the game. Um, Gapo was calm. Um, got Obviously got himself a goal. Then obviously, I don't know. Apparently he left He left on the knee, in a knee brace. So I don't know the situation there. Obviously, I'm assuming. Like by the time this video is posted out, we'll probably have a lot more news. But yeah, I, I think I heard or I read somewhere that he left on with a knee brace. So obviously that's going to be cause for concern. Um, in regards to that, but yeah, he's, he took, took that goal really, really well. I thought he messed up the chance though before he before he even scored that. I was like, oh, brother, why are you taking extra like an extra touch, like extra step? You don't need to do that. But he knew what he was doing. He slotted that home, and I felt like his overall performance. I felt like it was it was okay. It, it was okay for the time that he was um, for the time that he was on the pitch. I kind of understood why Klopp would have played him. I think he said Nunes did have a slight problem anyway, but I kind of understood. What I didn't understand is as much as pains me to even say this why you didn't bring on Nunes instead of Jota because for that type of game the way that Tottenham were playing we need the players to stretch them do you get what I'm saying and, and Diaz wasn't doing it well enough you could have really brought on Darwin Nunes to potentially help with that in my, in my personal opinion but hindsight's a wonderful thing hindsight's a wonderful thing um the last player I wanted to uh, take a look at in terms of the good this man right here now guys you know I keep it consistent I keep it damn well consistent like if I've got to give you praise, I'm going to have to give you praise. If I think you stink, then I'll say that you stink. This week, Virgil van Dijk, you see when, when I'm talking about, you know, again and again, this, this, is, this is the kind of things I keep referring to, people. This is like, listen to what I'm saying. You see when I talk about, I, I've not been impressed with Virgil this season too tough because in terms of like marshalling the defence and stuff like that, you know, defence looking at a wall and blah, 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 and just... Just looking like anybody can get in literally every single time. Today, I didn't get that feeling from Virgil van Dijk. I genuinely believed and felt like, you know, he, he played immense. He really, really did play immense. Again, I'm not looking for the stats. I don't really care. So maybe his dual percentage is probably really, really good or whatever. I, I don't actually really care about that. His performance on the pitch, you could just see it. When Liverpool went down to the nine men, you know, were really trying to battle. That's what I saw from Virgil. I, I saw Virgil putting you know, putting it in, in terms of the performance, in terms of the leadership, in terms of being able to lead the whole team into that kind of performance alongside Matip as well. Obviously, Matip scored an own goal, which is, you know, peak for him um, because he, I felt like he played good in the game. Gomez, you know, the right call to start him at right back. I felt like he was good in the game as well. But Van Dijk, he was the leader there. He, this was, again, like I said, this is the first performance that has really impressed me for Liverpool throughout the entire season. And again, from Virgil van Dijk watching him in this game, I felt like, yeah, Virgil was proper, proper on point, you know, within the game. So apologies if you guys hear my son snoring. <laughs> but yeah, um, in terms of Virgil van Dijk, you know, I felt like it was that leadership performance. Again, I've not seen that from you this season. I saw that in, you know, in the game against Spurs, you know. Um, so, yeah, I was happy, really, really happy, you know, with, with his performance, you know, uh, as an overall. So, you know, big up, big up Virgil, you know, in that sense, obviously it doesn't really matter now because they lost the game. So, you know, it, it's a bit of sweet, so to speak. But yeah, for me, 
like I said, man, overall, in totality, I was genuinely impressed, you know, with Liverpool, the way that we set up when we did go down to nine men, the way that we were quite compact, the way that Tottenham had zero ideas, doing the same thing over and over again. Obviously, it's, it's going to be difficult anyway to break down a team that's very, very compact, but also a team that's then able to bring on Konate. Then you've got Konate, Van Dijk, you know, Gomez, all these big guys, you know, in, in the box kind of thing. It's almost impossible for you to try and float boxes, uh, float balls in. So you're going to be in a position whereby you're going to need to, you know, drill these passes in. You're going to need to find cute ways to do things. Tottenham can do anything like that. They just completely and utterly ran out of, you know, ideas and things like that. So, you know, kudos to to Liverpool, kudos to Klopp, you know, in that regard, in terms of telling them, you know, in terms of what they have to do. But it really was a, a really good performance in my personal opinion. Um, I probably give it an eight out of ten performance from Liverpool. Um, that that's that's how much I fucked with that performance. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And this is the the kind of thing you know that I'm talking about. It's a bit like what I'm saying, you know, in my tweet that I put out there. Make sure you guys obviously head on over to Twitter to follow. Um, I know we lost, but that was the first game this season. I was impressed with the team and the way we played from back to front. Weird, weird old game. It really is a weird, weird old game. But um, yeah, that you know that that's the game in itself. That's kind of my match reaction. That's my kind of you know look at. Look at the game. Obviously, unbeaten run is now done. It's done now. Like I said, we've rolled our luck quite a lot during this period of time. So, you know, all that luck kind of run out, you know, in this game against Spurs. They got the victory. I think a draw would have been a fair result, to be honest with you, on the face of it. I felt like it was, that was enough for both teams. And, we, and Klopp even, I think, mentioned at the end of the game, said we would have celebrated a point like, oh my goodness. But again, going down to, to nine men and stuff like that, of course you would have. So, yeah, man. I think it is one of those kind of things. Um, we move, we move, we move, we move to our next Premier League game against Brighton. Let me know in the comment section who you guys put as your man of the match. Let me know what you guys obviously think about the game in totality and all of that kind of stuff. Make sure you guys give me a shout. That's my match reaction done and dusted. And we are out.